Okay, so Apple have just released their third generation iPad Pro. It was announced on the 30th of October 2018. Quite a few new changes to the iPad Pro format. Um, I'm just going to discuss whether I feel that it's worth upgrading or if you haven't in yet invested in an iPad Pro, I'm going to discuss whether now is the correct time for you. Now clearly there's lots of different reasons that people would want to buy an iPad Pro. Primarily for me, I'm an artist and I'm going to be discussing it from that perspective. I've been using the iPad Pro since it first came out in 2015 and I use it for all my digital painting at this point in time. I even, in terms of sketching and coming up with ideas, I will tend to use the iPad Pro for that too because the introduction of the Apple Pencil as a stylus, as a drawing implement, a painting implement with the iPad Pro has, right from the first generation, been an excellent tool for creating. There have been changes along the way. The second generation had less latency, less lag with the Apple Pencil. Although to be honest, it didn't make that much of a difference in terms of being able to create pictures and paintings uh, from the first generation to the second generation. So there was tweaks, there was some modification, but fundamentally it didn't really change the experience. Now with the third generation, I feel very much the same. There are some quite fundamental changes to the way that you're going to interact and use it. But in terms of the, your ability to create, the experience of drawing on the screen with an Apple Pencil has not fundamentally changed. It's the same technology. It'll be the same latency as far as Apple has announced. So in terms of the actual contact on the glass, it's going to feel pretty much the same as it has done. In terms of the design of the iPad Pro in 2018, it comes in two new sizes. Now I say that they're new, they're kind of very much the same in one way, but different in another. So for example, we used to have the 10.5 inch iPad Pro and that was released last year. And the new smaller version of the iPad Pro is getting a bigger screen. It's going from 10.5 to 11 inch, but it's keeping the same body size. So it's the same proportions of the actual case, but the screen size is, is uh, getting bigger. Now in terms of the 12.9, the screen size is staying the same on this version, but the body, the casing of it, is actually reducing in size. Now, this is something that I think is going to be uh, really great for iPad Pro users. I definitely wouldn't want to have seen any reduction in size of the 12.9. I could perhaps have lived with a, a size increase on the screen, but actually I think they've come up with the best overall solution of keeping the same large size screen, but just reducing the reducing the footprint of the actual device itself. They've also reduced the thickness of the iPad Pro by about a, mil a millimeter in general. Apart from the uh, the camera hump, which will be minimized by the use of a case with a cutout for the actual camera. So that should uh, negate the actual camera bump if you long to use a case. It also obviously, the most fundamental difference is the, the bezel size around the, the whole of the screen. Previously, you would have a large bezel top and bottom, and the bottom one would obviously accommodate the Touch ID sensor and the home button. Whereas now we've got roughly the same kind of size bezel all the way around that you'll see for the, the size of the notch in the iPhone 10. Now obviously that accommodates the technology for Face ID at the top of the iPad, um, but rather than having a kind of ugly notch at the top of the iPad, they've kind of decided to take that width of bezel and apply it for the whole device all the way around. So that kind of means that whichever way you turn it now, Face ID is going to be working. It doesn't have to be in portrait mode. It can work in landscape or upside down. So it almost doesn't matter which way that you actually use your iPad because the apps will rotate and you'll just carry on and, and almost become unaware of the positioning of the camera until you ac accidentally obscure it with your hands, obviously. So in terms of the uh, screen pixel dimensions of the two different iPads, we've got the 11 inch iPad that has 2,388 pixels by uh, 1,668 pixels. And the 12.9 has 2,732 pixels by 2,042 pixels. And they both have the same screen resolution, which is pretty standard across most Apple devices. So rather than going all out and trying to cram as many pixels as they possibly can, they just do it so that it works for the eye. You can't see the pixels, especially on a device like this one where you're holding it a little bit further away than you probably would your iPhone. Now, in addition to the really nice changes to the screen, we also have a change to the Apple Pencil. It has been updated and the way that it interacts with the iPad itself has been updated. Now it magneti magnetically attaches to the side of the iPad so that it also, whilst it's attached magnetically, it charges and it pairs. So gone are the days where it really awkwardly shoves into the lightning port 
and sticks out, looks like it's going to break off at any point. And don't get me wrong, I kind of lived with that and found it perfectly acceptable because there was no other option. But this is a much more seamless, more kind of elegant solution of actually getting around that problem. So because of that, the actual design of the Apple Pencil itself has changed. We have a flat side on the Apple Pencil so you know which side is going to connect to the iPad itself so it sits flush. It also has the benefit of not rolling off the edge of your table when you're using it as well, which is great. But it's very much different. It has a completely seamless design. So it's gone are the days where you're going to lose the actual cap off the end of it. You no longer have to pull the cap off and reveal the lightning plug to go in the iPad itself. It also has a matte finish now, which I think is very important. The last Apple Pencil had quite a glossy, smooth finish on it to the point where I'd actually started to use um, grips on the Apple Pencil itself. Now, this is not going to be something that is going to be possible on the new Apple Pencil, but because by using an actual grip on it, you would obscure the area of the Apple Pencil and it has a double tap function. Now, the double tap function is going to be really useful in different kinds of apps. Hopefully, the apps are going to allow you to set exactly what you want that double tap to do. So whether it's zooming in, changing from pencil to eraser, or what other, other function you might actually want to use, hopefully we get some choice and versatility in that. But you don't really want to be covering that up with a grip. So therefore, the matte finish, hopefully, is really going to negate the need for that. And I'm also hoping that the the flat side on the pencil will give your hand and your fingers something to grip to as well. So fingers crossed they've actually got round the problem of the first design of the Apple Pencil and they've hopefully fixed it in this version. But that remains to be seen. Another bonus of this is that obviously now because the Apple Pencil is going to be attached to the side it's going to leave the charging port on the iPad free so you can charge both devices at the same time. So you can be charging the iPad while it's plugged in to the wall and the Apple Pencil will be attached to the iPod and therefore that will be charging simultaneously. Speaking of charging, we have a new charging port. We have the USB-C style charging brought to the iPad for the first time. Not only does that give you a faster charging time, it also gives higher performance. So you can connect to different accessories, uh, cameras or other monitors and things like that. So there's lots of things that you can do with USB-C over the lightning connector. So that's a really fantastic change from Apple. It does, however, mean Unfortunately, you're not going to be able to use your old Apple Pencil with the new iPad and vice versa. You're not going to be able to use the new Apple Pencil with the old iPad. So you have to bear that in mind. If you've got a one or two Apple Pencils with your old iPad Pro, they are going to become obsolete if you change your iPad. So you're going to have to sell the whole lot and buy the whole lot afresh. Personally, I'm not too bothered about that. I think that the, the benefits that come with a new Apple Pencil and a new iPad, I wouldn't really want to be using my old Apple Pencil anyway. I think it makes perfect sense to buy the new one that's compatible with the new device. And likewise, there's no point having the, the new Apple Pencil with the older iPad if it can't attach and it doesn't charge that way. So I hear that the new adapter, the wall adapter that comes in the box with the new iPad is going to be an 18 watt adapter, which is an increase from a 12 from previous iPads, so that should charge a lot faster, um, but we'll have to see. The battery life is, is roughly the same as the old iPad lineup, so it should last you most of the day, depending on what activities you're actually using it for, so about 10 hours on average. We have the same camera now in the iPad as we have on the, the 10s. so in the unlikely situation where you're going to be wanting to use your iPad as an actual camera, then the great the technology is there it's a really good camera to have the screen technology is really good it's really bright it's got 600 nits brightness it's got the p3 wide color gamut it's got really low reflectivity and it's got your true tone however i tend to disengage the true tone when i'm actually painting and drawing i really want the color to be consistent i want the colors to look the same in one room as it does in the other but if you're using it to read or generally browse the internet, then True Tone is really good. In terms of power and performance, we have the Apple uh, A12X chip, and that has 64-bit architectural neural engine, um, and it's really supposed to be massively fast and efficient. I've not really, to be honest, noticed any problems with the previous iPads. They've been really fast and really efficient at any of the, the programs, the apps, rather, that I've wanted to use. So I think in terms of the general app usage, it's not going to make much difference. However, Adobe has announced that because of the, the new iPads, it now has the, the power and performance to run uh, full Photoshop. Now, obviously, the interface of the Photoshop app is going to be a bit different than the uh, full program on the desktop because we have a smaller screen compared to a desktop monitor. Therefore, they've engineered an entire new interface. But with that, it comes with the fundamentals of, of Photoshop, which is going to be amazing. I'm a massive supporter of the app Procreate. 
and I think that does sort of 80% of the kind of things that I would generally do on Photoshop but there definitely are some additional tools that Photoshop does that it's going to be really amazing to have on the iPad on the go. I'm not too sure whether Adobe is releasing the app so it's going to be backwards compatible with the previous iPad Pros. It may well be the case that they are. I'm not sure about that. They didn't really announce that. They made a big commotion about how it's now powerful enough to run Photoshop. So it's a little unclear at this point. The new iPad Pros are gonna have four gigs of RAM. If you upgrade to the one terabyte version of the iPad Pro, then apparently that comes with six gigabytes of RAM. So after that summary, the fundamental question is, is it worth upgrading? So if you have a first generation iPad Pro, then you're going to notice some really big difference. To be honest, even if you have last year's or last version's iPad Pro, either the, the one from 2017 or the one previous to that. Whichever version you've got, the experience of using the Apple Pencil is not going to be too radically different in terms of the actual creating part. However, the new technology that allows you to just magnetically attach the Apple Pencil, to charge it, for it to wirelessly connect and pair, I think on a practical sense, is going to make the everyday use of it a much nicer experience. That doesn't mean it's a necessary feature, but I think that anyone that buys it at this point is, if they haven't already had an iPad Pro, is going to be very glad that they've got this version and compared to the older version. Now, is it worth passing with a, a shed load of your own money to upgrade it? Then I guess that's the question for you, your finances, for your priorities. If art and your iPad Pro is something you use it more occasionally, and it isn't something you need to use on a daily basis, then maybe hold off, because your iPad Pro is still gonna be a fantastic device for many years to come. We obviously have um, a cheaper version iPad now, so it is the standard iPad that is also compatible with the Apple Pencil. So again, that is another option, because the price of these new iPad Pros is pretty steep. So it's fairly similar in dollars to is UK pounds, and you're gonna be starting, I believe it is, for the 12.9, it is $999, and in the UK, it's £969. Um, it's $799 for the smaller version, the 11-inch iPad Pro, uh, and again, it's pretty comparable uh, to the UK pounds prices. It's worth checking out the prices because currently you can get the, the normal iPad that is also compatible with Apple Pencil for far less than that. 300 and I believe it's 29 in the region of that. So you're looking at a really a fraction of the price for the standard iPad. So if that is, is something that you're going to do more occasionally, you might be better to just stick with a standard iPad or with your old iPad Pro. Another option, obviously, is to pick up all the iPad Pros that are going to be suddenly flooding the market as people want to upgrade. People are going to be ditching them on eBay or anywhere else. So it may well be the, the time to pick up a second generation iPad Pro that is still an amazing device and let other people part with a load of money for the new iPad Pros and get yourself a cheaper version, um, but a used version. Personally, because of my channel, I will always be upgrading to the new iPads because I want to showcase, I want to uh, show people the latest technology. And I do think that on this occasion, the upgrade is far more worth it than it was between the first and second generation iPad Pros. I think that this time they are definitely bringing to the iPad more features, more benefits, more power, more versatility. It's just generally a better all round device. In some ways, this is the iPad Pro we should have had right from the beginning. But the Apple Pencil, now that has gesture control, it attaches to the iPad. It's such a fantastic package overall now. If you've been thinking and been holding off about getting an iPad, you've got loads of choices. You've got the cheaper, older generations that are still amazing, and you've got the brand new version, which is undoubtedly an advanced, definitely an improved version. So overall, obviously, it's one of those questions very difficult to answer, it depends on your situation. I do think that the new iPads are very expensive, but I also think that the added usability is a massive improvement and I would be paying for that even without my channel as long as I could afford it. But another aspect to this is that people sometimes make the mistake of thinking that the technology makes the artist and it really doesn't. If you're a good artist and you really want to get good at drawing and painting then you can do that with a pencil and paper and traditional materials. You don't need any level of technology and the better the technology is is not going to equate to better artwork necessarily. You need to have those fundamental skills. So if you're looking to develop your skills digitally, 
then there's nothing wrong with starting with a cheaper, older version. So please don't invest in the latest iPad thinking that you need that in order to produce good digital artwork, because that is clearly not the case. Anyway, please leave me your ideas, your comments in the comments section. Any questions, I'll be happy to answer down there about the different iPads. If I can possibly help you, I will. Most of my videos are tutorial based, so please subscribe, please check out my other videos, and I shall catch you back here again. See you later.